Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spot coming at you with my uh, the second uh, part of my Star Wars catch up. So, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, um, if you, uh, about a, I think it was last month, I realized I had missed more than a few uh, single issues on some of the various uh, Star Wars books. Uh, we covered the ongoings that we missed, so now it's on the minis. So we've got Obi-Wan number two. And to be fair, I did put Obi-Wan number three in this stack, though we actually did cover that on a, on a weekly roundup. So uh, the framing device of the Obi-Wan miniseries is that a sandstorm is coming in. Um, it seems to be rather close to uh, the events of A New Hope. Um, while reflecting on, on the, and Obi Wan's reflecting on things, writing in his journal. But um, he uh, he states that uh, the, the sands from strengthening their mere hour and their only mere hour left where all, all the swallows will light of the twin suns. One can find comfort in dimming sky, be drawn to the allure. With the accompanying silence and the shadows that drape themselves over, over one's senses. Too much comfort, perhaps. In these times, uh, Obi Wan says he must, right, he must be, remain aware, even so many years on, or else he'll find himself suddenly enveloped in those shadows. In those shadows, the warm promise of such a, such a cloak can suddenly become cold and binding. Uh, and then, quite, he mentions that quite recently he, uh, th this. Also, also, this uh, notably takes place after the uh, Obi Wan's final run-in with Darth Maul, as shown, I think, in uh, Star Wars Rebels. But uh, we want things back to a, a mission uh, when he was when he was a, a Padawan. This appears to be, I would say, shortly before the events of the Phantom Menace. Um, but the mission was through the uh, the Codia system, a, a mid rid system. Obi Wan and Qui Gon arrive. Uh, apparently, um, the mining outpost described the uh, planet as being in utter blackness, the kind where a man taking a step forward doesn't know whether his boot will sink for, sink forever sink forever to nothing. But uh, Obi Wan thinks they they have to be exaggerating. Even tidally locked, the moon's dark side would re would receive planet shine from from Kodia. But uh, Qui Gon tells him that while well, he seems to have all the answers, but he he hasn't solved the riddle. Perhaps when they look upon the situation with their own eyes, then the solution may come to them. So they arrive, um, and they're wearing uh, modified macro binoculars to, to allow them to see. But even then, it's not affording much uh, visibility, much additional visibility. Um, also, it seems that their lightsabers were dimming. They find a they find an injured and dying man. It seems someone was trying to steal uh, um, some of the, the diamond deposits on the planet. Also, the uh, there's a the power of the, the uh, power with the power core. Obi Wan and, and Qui Gon explore further in uh, Anakin or Obi Wan briefly. Runs into a devil, but he's unable to. He swings at him, but with his lighter, but does manage to get him. The devil, however, does manage to uh, scratch up scratch Obi Wan's face. But uh, Qui Gon or Obi Wan manages to knock him down, um, and it's explained that uh, yes, there was an attempted robbery. He went wrong. Um, But uh, the fuel rod for the power core 
um, a non-incendiary photonic charge was used to, to destroy it. And uh, they realized that the radioactivity being released is suppressing the entire light spectrum. And uh, it's further explained that uh, the Deffels are the miners. Deffels seem to have a um, a connection of sorts to the light, and so the way the uh, with what's happening with the light, it it, it seems as though. Uh, the devil is, uh, is kind of, you know, because of this connection, he, uh, because of uh, the radiation, it's basically messing with his head and leading him to uh, be a bit feral. Um, Obi-Wan manages to redact the fuel core. Um, the devil apologizes and he after Obi-Wan comes to and um, though he's his spirit remains troubled because of his actions the administrator of the colony says that uh, the devil isn't to blame he was disoriented and sick and the only people he killed were the, the thieves who showed up and that is where the issue ends like I said, we, we covered Obi-Wan number three on the roundup, but since it's here, quick rundown is as the storm continues to rage, um, Obi-Wan flashes back to uh, one of the battles of the Clone Wars. Uh, an important thing to note in the uh, mini in the issue is that we see that it shows the importance of the clone the name the clones naming themselves. Anyway, moving on to Han Solo and Chewbacca. And we've got actually three issues to go over here. So issue three was the first one we was the one we actually missed when it came when it released. Um, where we left off in issue two, um, Jabba the Hutt has hired Han Solo, Chewbacca, and Grigo to steal an urn containing the ashes of, of his arch rival. On Corellia, they uh, they've gotten some help along with from a man claiming to be Han's father. The home of the owner's owner was uh, they broke into the home of the owner's owner, but the item wasn't there. And um, yeah, security guards are on the other side of the door, so yeah, they're kind of trapped. So they're trying to figure out what to do about uh, being trapped. Um, Greedo tries to shoot out the window, but it's transparent seal, so the blaster bolt just ricochets throughout the room. Um, Han uses Comlink to get in touch with Chewie, explaining what's happened. Um, and he manages to find some information as to where the urn is. So, um, They call for uh, Mercy Evac. Um, some of the corporate security uh, med med personnel show up, and uh, Han, Greedo, and Han's father steal their spear and drive off and fly up, fly off to meet up with uh, Chewie. Then board the Falcon, and uh, Han leave. Han opts to leave Greedo behind as his his bad intel got them where, to a degree, got them where they were. They, the information they've got to, leads into the planet Antillion. Um, Han talks with a uh, shopkeeper asking about an urn, but she says she doesn't have anything like that. Han figures she's lying. So the plan is that. Uh, Soldiers were sick on her, and uh, during everything, um, 
Han and his father go to take the urn. But uh, Han's father is shot in the back. And Black Chrysanthemum shows up. And grabs Han. And so, in issue four, Chewie goes to investigate, finds, uh, tries to stop Chrysanthemum from taking Han with him, but uh, it does at least leave a tracker on uh, Chrysanthemum's ship. He takes Han's father back to the, uh, the Falcon, and uh, so they end up on the, the uh, Molo, Tana, uh, Molo Tonka planetoid, and uh, Han's father, while cleaning his blaster, passes out on the, on the Dedrick table. Chewie uh, wakes him up, but he's a little seems a little shaky. So Chewie tracks things, tracks everyone down, um, deals with security, and uh, Han's being interrogated by Bra by Chris Hatton's boss. But uh, Chewie shows up, and uh, Chewie and Chrysanthemum have a bit of a, of a, of a fight with one another. Um, Chewie becoming a victor, and uh, Chewie ending the fight by dropping a thermal detonator. He, gets, he throws Han's blaster back to him. Um, Han and Chewie shoot their way out, but the Falcon is missing. Which brings us to Han Solo and Chewbacca number five. Which actually just released this week, so we're caught up, caught up. Um, the guard, Sin and the guards have chased after Han and Chewie, but another ship shows up and uh, brings Han and Chewie aboard. It's uh, Apparently, it was a crew that uh, Han left stranded on uh, Planet Galator 3. Greedo's with them as well, and, well, yeah, Han admits he did leave Greedo stranded. But uh, they want the urn as well. And, uh,. Han point, you know, says they got to what happened to the Falcon and his, and his father. But, um, they so they arrive on Antillion. But, uh, and it's revealed that, yeah, it clearly wasn't Han's father. Though, uh, and apparently, Han had bought the guy, had bought what the guy was selling, except that uh, there were also he didn't entirely buy it. On uh, the planet Takar, or Eakar, I guess. Um, Han's father is uh, stopped by, is taken in custody by the Balance Marshal Service, Marshal Bankto. And, uh, 
Fenrir takes warrants out for Han's quote unquote father. He's actually a man named Corvus Tyra. But, uh, so, it turns out that, uh, Tyra is being taken to the, uh, to the Pocalus III in the inner room, which is the headquarters of the Benox Marshal Services. Um, But, uh, Chewie gets shot as they try to escape, and, uh, the crew that, uh, they're currently running with, however, isn't in favor of, uh, going back for him. But uh, Han's not too fond of the idea of leaving Chewie behind. He disarms the uh, he disarms uh, the the crew captain. Um, Greedo fires a shot. And apparently, seemingly kills kills Solo. While Chewie is taken into custody by the Benelux Marshal Service. On the planet of uh, Golhador, Golhadar, um, Chewie is uh, brought into his, into his cell and he has a cellmate, Maz Kanata. Fun point uh, while walking through, a couple of uh, a couple of prisoners passed by and referred one of, them refer, one of the two referred to Chewie as fresh meat. So those couple of prisoners being none other than Ponda Baba and Dr. Evazon. For those unaware who, uh, who Jack I'm speaking, I'm talking about, um, these are the uh, the guys that uh, give Luke a hard time in the beginning of uh, the first Star Wars movie. Uh, Evazon uh, states that they're wanted men. And they hear the death sentence on on 12 systems. Pondababa being the one who gets, uh, well, disarmed by Obi-Wan. But that is where the issue ends, bringing us up to date on Han Solo and Chewbacca, as well as Obi-Wan. But anyway, that is going to do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal will be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.